This video contains historical footage and audio from the September 11 terror attacks against the World Trade Center in 2001. This video is for educational purposes and to honor those who lost their lives during this dark day in American history. Some viewers might find some of this footage or audio disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. It's two minutes before the top of the hour. AP Network News, good morning, I'm Ross Simpson. Air Jordan is apparently ready for takeoff. Former NBA superstar Michael Jordan is on his way back to the NBA. President Bush is going to get an earful from Republican members of Congress when he hosts the annual congressional barbecue tonight at the White House. The president visits a school today to tout his education proposals before heading back to Washington. Laura Bush travels to Hello everyone, it's Willie Cuz and uh, I have something, I guess special you could say, planned for this September 11th anniversary. So we're gonna sift through these four hours of pure Manhattan dispatch from 9-11 and I'm gonna highlight some key moments um, that we can hear coming over the air and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. This is of course in memory for all those people who perished on September 11th, 2001. This is Fire Alarm Dispatcher Carlos Sanchez of Fire Dispatch Operations on September 17th, 2001. Make a cassette tape from Manhattan Master Tape 423. Originally recorded on September 11th, 2001 in the County of New York, City of New York, State of New York, in conjunction with citywide job number 1-44. Please stand by for a series of messages. Message 1 is a straight radio run received on channels 15 and 17. The message commences at 0800 hours, 46 minutes and 43 seconds. Into the area. 10 4 
Battalion 1. Battalion 1 is also sending the whole consignment on this box to that area, okay? What you just heard was the voice of Chief Pfeiffer of Battalion 1. They had been investigating a possible gas leak at an intersection when American Airlines Flight 11 flew right over their heads and into the North Tower. The reason they were recording at the time was because they had some filmmakers with them who were trying to film a documentary about Pfeiffer's firehouse. And this is actually that very camera that captured the previous footage, which it is now on display at the 9-11 Museum. The filmmaker's name was Jules Naudet. Chief Pfeiffer was the first to report the World Trade Center incident and also survived the events of 9-11. Engine 6 to Engine 6. The World Trade said that tower number 1 is on fire. The whole outside of the building was just a huge explosion. 10 for all companies stand by at the top. That was Captain Jay Jonas of Ladder 6. Captain Jay, accompanied by Salvador D'Agostino, Matt Komarowski, Bill Butler, Mike Meldrum, and Tommy Falco, ascended up the North Tower attempting to save trapped workers. While they were taking a rest on the 27th floor, the South Tower collapsed. After realizing what happened, Captain Jonas immediately decided that him and his group needed to evacuate the North Tower as soon as possible. It was only a matter of time before his tower collapsed as well. On the way back down the stairs, they encountered a woman named Josephine Harris suffering from an injured leg. Despite trying to evacuate the tower himself, he decided to help carry her down the stairs as well. When they made it to the fourth floor, the North Tower collapsed on top of them, where they became known as the Miracle in Stairway B, as despite the entire North Tower landing on them, they found themselves in a pocket that was relatively untouched by the falling debris. Three hours later, they would be dug out and rescued by their fellow firefighters. Engine 1-0, World Trade Center, 1060. Send every available ambulance, everything you got, to the World Trade Center now. Four, ten, six, been transmitted for the World Trade Center. Three truck to Manhattan. Three truck. Civilian reports from up here a plane just crashed into the World Trade Center for your information. Ten, four, okay. Trucks available. Coming in. Battalion one to Manhattan. We have a number of floors on fire. It looked like the plane was aiming towards the building. Transmit a third along. We'll have the staging area at Vesey and West Street. Have the third alarm assignment go into that area. Second alarm assignment report to the building, okay? Alright, 10-4. Second alarm assignment report to the World Trade Center. Second alarm assignment report to one World Trade Center. You hear there that Battalion 1, who were the ones that witnessed it fly into the building, they are probably the first to report that it seemed intentional, that the plane seemed to purposely fly into the World Trade Center. For those who may not know, this was not the first time that the World Trade Center was targeted by terrorism. In 1993, the World Trade Center was bombed. Terrorists drove a van bomb into the parking garage underneath the North Tower and detonated it, causing some pretty serious damage and killing six people, including a pregnant woman. Uh, thousands of other injuries, of course, and 50,000 people were evacuated from the buildings. So a lot of these guys knew that an attack on the World Trade Center, or something like that, would not be unheard of. Squad 1-8 to Squad 1-8 It's the first battalion transmitted that it looked like it was intentional. It's four more units. Going into the box, it could be a terrorist attack. That was Squad 18, and most likely the voice of Lieutenant William McGinn. They heard Battalion 1's report that the plane crash looked intentional, and they picked up on that and said that if that's true, notify everyone that this could be a terror attack. So, they pretty much called it, this was not normal. All responders from Squad 18 were killed on 9-11. Engine 1 on Manhattan. 
So that was engine 10 from 10 House. 10 House was right across the street from the World Trade Center, and when the buildings collapsed, they collapsed with a lot of their rubble landing on top of 10 House, which still stands there today. Being the closest fire station, they were also the first on scene running across the street not long after the plane had struck the tower. They lost five men that morning, including retired firefighter James J. Corrigan and Lieutenant Greg Atlas, whose voice we just heard on air. Paulie was detailed out to 26. He passed away. Sean Talon was a probie. Jeff Olson had a couple of months more than me. He also passed away. They were in the ladder. The 10 House lost a total of six heroes, their names and faces honored in this memorial. It's been here for 16, 17 years. It wanted to last forever. That was the door off the engine. A few feet above the mangled fire engine door, the Liberty Street sign. Overhead, signed helmets from fire companies all over the world. The whole company will sign a helmet and say, go present this to the firehouse, tell them thank you. And one by one, we hang them all up. On the side of the building, a 56-foot-long bronze memorial honoring the 343 firefighters who gave their lives to save others that day. Rescue to the Manhattan. Rescue 2, Lieutenant Peter Martin, reporting that they were on the way. All responders from Rescue 2, who were at the World Trade Center when it collapsed, were killed. We commandeered a uh, regular MTA bus. We found every piece of equipment that we could find in the firehouse, put it in the bus, and that bus driver drove us right down to City Hall, just as the second tower came down. And then uh, we lived on the streets for almost three straight days, searching for our brothers that were lost. Division 1, I'm going to have to take. Division 1, yeah. We're responding, have another rescue spot out. 10-4, rescue yeah. two spot out to box 8087, yeah. Rescue 2 is responding, guys. That was Deputy Chief Peter Hayden with Division 1. He survived the events of 9-11. To search and evacuate as many people as we could, Elevators were out, so firefighters climbed tight stairwells, shouldering 75 pounds and more. Four Bravo is responding to the World Trade Center. That's four, okay. 40 out of today. 40 out. That's on the way to the Trade Center. 10 4. Engine 5 5. Could you please have ambulances respond to West Street? We have several injured uh, people on uh, West Street here. That was Lieutenant Freund with Engine 55. He had actually decided to change career paths and become a high school math teacher, but was unfortunately killed with the rest of his responders from Engine 55 on 9-11. A letter accepting his application arrived the week after September 11th. His wife claimed that he always said he never wanted to work one tour too many. 55 was also home to Steve Buscemi, who was a New York City firefighter before pursuing his career in acting. 9-11 had him return to 55 and work at Ground Zero, searching for his fallen brothers. Morning of the 12th, I went to my old firehouse just to see what happened and if I could just offer any help to the firehouse. But they weren't there and then I ended up down at the site. I still have my turnout coat and helmet and gloves and I brought that with me and once I found my company, ended up working with them the rest of the day and they invited me back the next the next day, and so I did that for the next few days. Call it orange, only three truck to Manhattan. Three truck, go. We're in a house in the West Broadway. We can see this from here. We've been directed by numerous civilians. He wants to take this in, he wants to stand fast. Take that in, Ted. That was Captain Brown reporting in for Ladder 3. Ladder 3 lost all 12 of its first responders when the North Tower collapsed. It is now on display at the National September 11 Memorial Museum. I'm on the 35th floor, okay? Okay. Just related to the command post. Numerous civilians in all stairwells. Numerous burn injuries are coming down. I'm trying to send them down first. Apparently, it's above the 75th floor. I don't know if they got there yet, okay? Okay. It's a free truck and we're still heading up, all right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Rescue 3 in Manhattan on your frequency. That was Rescue 3 responding. 
another group of first responders who all lost their lives. At this moment, I would also like to recognize the rest of the rescue companies who paid such a high price on that terrible day. I mean, Ray Meisenheimer, you know, just uh, Wally the Buff. Wally the Buff. Oh, that was and hysterical. It was just, that was something. Those, those were funny, those were funny, funny nights were when, funny. when he was on that kick. How about Donnie Regan? If he ever lost his life. Check my pocket, the winning lottery. Tuck it'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> he always said. Joe Spore. His father was a lieutenant rescue three. I knew, I knew it was his dream to come here. He was just one of those guys that, you know, you could see he was going to be a star. What about the Shrang Man, man? Jeremy. The Shrang <laughs> Man. Yeah, Tommy Gambino. He's here, what, a year and a half? A year and a half. What, did you grow up with him? Yeah, I went to high school with him. He was always fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. I'd love to take his boy surfing all the time. Yeah. Like that, he's a devout Catholic, like Bobby was saying, and you know, with that uh, old school little, Catholic. Uh, Old, uh, Latin devout mass. Latin mass. No meat on Friday, but watch at 12 o'clock, man. He was in that refrigerator eating that steak. <laughs> <laughs> 12 or 1, you better not be in his way. You, you might get a chunk out of your arm. <laughs> yeah, I miss Tommy. Rescue 4 out of Manhattan, guys. Rescue 4. On your frequency responding, guys. 10-4. That was most likely the voice of Lieutenant Kevin Dowdell, since Captain Hickey was filling in for Rescue 3 that day. Sky 7 Manhattan, Jay. Got a 110 to Manhattan. Sky 7, go with Manhattan. Now, wherever it was, hit the north side of the building. Fire vector from at least one floor. Heavy smoke show over the front and on the top of the building. Approximately the 90 something floor, Jay. Okay. That was Chief Palmer with Battalion 7. After the second plane struck the South Tower, Chief Palmer would lead a team of firefighters all the way up to the impact zone where the plane had hit. Him and his team stayed at the impact zone battling the blaze until the tower finally collapsed. Battalion 7, go with the MSFK. I'm going to turn on the fourth family repeater and the battalion car is a backup to the building repeater, K. Squad 288 to Manhattan, K. Squad 288. On your frequency responding, can you send us a ticket, please? That was Lieutenant Kerwin with Squad 288. This photo shows members of Squad 288 entering the World Trade Center on 9-11. All first responders from Squad 288 were killed. Car 3 to Manhattan, okay? Car 3, go. Mm. Car 3 and Car 4 are riding together, responding down. Transmit a fifth alarm for this box. Get us a staging area tree, uh, chief somewhere on West Street, okay? Mm. Car 3 was carrying the New York City Fire Department's Chief Gancy. Gancy and his team were in the basement of the South Tower when it collapsed on top of them. However, they survived and dug themselves out of the rubble. Gancy ordered his men to set up a different command post in a safer location, while he himself returned to World Trade Center 1, the North Tower, where he continued directing the rescue efforts. Chief Gancy died when the North Tower collapsed on top of him. Fifth alarm has been transmitted, box 8087. Fifth alarm has been transmitted, box 8087, for number one, World Trade Center. How are you doing at the fire department? Hi. I'm on the 100th floor of the World Trade Center with 30 people in the northeast corner. It's hard to talk. Yeah. There's a lot of smoke. Right. The heat. We're all overreacting. Please come right now. Alright, no problem. We'll get to you. Please, immediately. They're on the way. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,
And as firefighters came in, they came in quietly. This noise from the equipment we carry, but they didn't say a lot. They were thinking about what lied ahead. Chief McGovern from Battalion 2 is the first to report that they have jumpers at the World Trade Center. Him and Chief Richard Prunty were both killed. When we heard the crashing sound, uh, it was something that we never heard before. And it would rattle us for a couple seconds. But it was almost motivating us to push even further to get to the people that were trapped. The first firefighter to die on 9-11 was Danny Sewer. Danny was killed when one of the jumpers impacted him. You know, I just hear this whistle come in like a bomb. You know, I, could I see you know, the body come flying by and it tags him in the head. I think just the foot caught him. And I remember watching Danny fall back. And I remember, you know, as, as this person came in and hit, they crashed into a Volkswagen. There was a Volkswagen parked in the corner and it exploded. You know, the person exposed. You know, and so everyone's down our it's everywhere now, you know. Now we're just laying, you know, just gross stuff, you know. Just, so I, I remember just looking up and I'm like, I'm like, Danny, Danny. To see him go down was like, oh my God, you know, like, this guy can't die. You know, it's Danny Sarr. He's the captain of the football team. He's the guy who does everything. Charlie's responding, be advised, you got all boats available for any transport through the river with the rescue. 10-4, okay. 
We're getting reports on the 104th floor, back room, 25 to 30 people trapped. I also have the 103rd floor, northwest room, 103, with people trapped also. I have the 83rd floor with people trapped as well. Call 4 David Receiver. Call 4 David, 10-4. Aye, right, 10-4. <laughs> Squad 4-1, relocate to Squad 1-8, kid. Squad 4-1-10-4. Lieutenant Michael Healy was killed on 9-11, along with the rest of his first responders from Squad 41. Can you confirm that Hasnab 1 is responding to the 1060? Mm -hmm. They've been assigned, kid. Hasnab 1 to Manhattan? Hasnab 1. Mm -hmm. And okay, we are responding, we're just out of the tunnel. Zero Pacific Route that is set up to emergency We can hear Lieutenant Chrissy filling in for Captain Thomas Moody, as Thomas Moody was the officer in charge for the day, also filling in for Captain Patrick Waters. This is one of those situations that makes it hard for me to confidently assign casualties to certain units, as the logistics of that day were clearly all over the place. Many of these firefighters were serving and died with units that they were not officially assigned to, I've come across many cases like that one where firefighters are filling in for other firefighters at different engines or different rescue companies, different ladders, and because of that I would like to apologize in advance for any errors I may make while listing the casualties for each individual unit. Hazmat 1 as a whole lost all of its first responders except for one sole survivor, Anthony Castagna, whose job it was to stay in the rig. Yeah, 175, recycle your transponder, score code of 1470. United 175, New York. United 175, do you read New York? Other 1489, do you read New York? Other 1489, go ahead. Okay, just wanted to make sure you read New York. Hello. Do you um, see that United 175 anywhere? And do me a favor, you see that target there, the 33-5 climbing? Don't know who he is. We, we have a hijack. We have some problems over here right now. Oh, you do? Yes, I can't get a hold of United 175 at all right now. And I don't know where he went to. All right. Okay, I'll see if I have one. All right. United 175, New York. Hey, can you look out your window right now? Can you see God about 4,000 feet, about 5 east of your airport right now? Yeah, I see him. Is he descending for the building also? He's descending really quick too, yeah. 2,500 feet now. He just dropped 800 feet in like, a, like one, one sweep. That's, that's another situation. His vantage point on 14th Street, and again, we're talking about a plane crash into the World Trade Center. Kai, what did you see and what can you see now? Uh, well, I saw the, the plane come overhead. I happen to be looking south of the World Trade Center. There's now another explosion occurring right at this moment in the other building. Do you have a second plane into the other tower of the tower of the trade center? Major fire. 
responders of Ladder 4, all killed. Lieutenant Michael Quilty and the rest of the first responders from Ladder 11, all killed. Squad 252's first responders were all killed. Car 9 was with Citywide Tour Chief Barbara. They communicate with dispatch several more times before the South Tower collapses, killing them. Chief Barbara and Chief Burns were two Citywide Tour commanders killed that day. So that was a mixer off message and field calm was requesting that all New York City Fire Department chaplains report to the World Trade Center. I will take this moment to recognize Chaplain Michael Judge, who was a chaplain killed by falling debris when the South Tower collapsed. 
The following message from Dispatch is believed to be sourced from Patty Brown and Ladder 3, who raced up to the 35th floor by 9.24 a.m. and reported numerous people trapped with severe injuries in the North Tower. Go ahead, Seal Com. Go ahead, Seal Com. All right, Seal Com, number one World Trade Center. The 103 floor, southwest corner and northwest corner. Reported to be 100 people overcome at that location. Repeating, <laughs> World Trade Center, 103rd floor, northwest corner. Reported to be 100 people in that location. Also, ladder three is reporting. On the 35th, 35th floor, going up on the stairwell, they got numerous injuries, repeating numerous injuries from burns occupied in the stairwells at this time. Fuel calm received? Fuel no calm received. Eight, 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 Captain Brunton with Ladder 105. All Ladder 105 first responders killed on 9 11. Alright, attention all units, by the order of the citywide tour commander, all off duty firefighters and all off duty officers are hereby recalled, repeating, by the orders of the citywide tour commander, all off duty firefighters and all off duty officers who are hereby ordered for recall immediately. Fort Charlie to Manhattan, okay? Repeating, and then announcing the fall of Manhattan. As for citywide tour commander, all off duty firefighters, all off duty officers are hereby ordered for recall. Repeating, orders of the citywide tour commander, all off duty firefighters, all off duty officers, who are hereby ordered for recall. Call for Charlie. 17 to Manhattan, urgent. Unit calling urgent, go. 17 to Manhattan, urgent. Engine 317, go. You guys, I got somebody here for the Ford Authority is telling me that the elevators are on the 44th floor. Don't use them, they're about to come down. Is that going to be for the number two or number one World Trade? Was it sure? I'd say go with both. Alright, attention all companies operating at the fifth alarm for both World Trade Centers. The elevators, the Port Authority reports the elevators on the number four floor floor is about to come down. For all companies operating at number one and number two World Trade Center at the fifth alarm, do not use the elevators. They're about to come down as for the Port Authority on the number four floor floor. Field calm, receive that urgent? Let's do five to Manhattan. Let's do five. Ten eight on your frequency. Let's do five, ten four, make yourself available, okay? Nine, David, go ahead. You ready to write the identity? Okay, go ahead. Engine 240, 201, 249, 278, 281, 228, 219, 280. Your four truck companies will be 102, 119, 114, 113. Three chiefs I gave you would be the 32, the 41, and the 42, all coming through the battery tunnel. Uh, I'm not identifying any fast truck if you want to fit truck, let me know and we'll send you one. That's uh, a negative. That last engine was 210. Negative, 281. Hey, thank you. 10-4. No com case. Okay. 864, building 1, room 8617, people trapped. Also, in building 2, 97th floor, we have 6 people trapped. Proceed, Manhattan, field count. All right, mail hanging from a window near the antenna in building one. The floor number? Uh, probably be up on the top floor, okay? Then four. All right, building two. Building two, 80th floor. Eight Sorry. Eight people trapped, okay? The floor? 804, 804 in building two. 80 people trapped. 204, 104. Engine 201 in Manhattan? Engine 201. You got a message for us? Engine 201, you're going through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. It's going to Albany and West Street. Engine 201. Engine 201, 10-4.
Engine 201, Lieutenant Paul Martini, all first responders killed. My orders are Chief Gant, Chief Gant, transmit an additional fifth alarm. Have the, uh, the additional fifth alarm units respond in the west and Vesey. West and Vesey. Okay. All right, 10 Authority, Chief Gant, fifth alarm, west and Vesey. Call 9K. I'd like to advise the third fifth alarm for box 2033 is going to be transmitted. I have 13 engines so far and six trucks and three battalions responding for various staging points. Are you ready to write the identities? Yeah, go ahead, Matt. All right, you're going to get engine 258, 259, 325, 262, 312, 261, 260, engine 68, 35, 50, 64, 94, and 83. I gave you three chiefs, the 45, the 46, and the 49. I owe you seven more engines. We're in the process. All right, Manhattan, thank you very much. Well, that part will be 203, please, Steve. Oh, then the field comm, urgent. Proceed to the field comm. Tower number two, 19th floor, firefighter down. Tower number two, 19th floor, firefighter down. The comm received. All right, all units stand by. Manhattan, hold on a second. Manhattan, call the field comm, okay? Okay. Alright, building 2, 93rd floor, northwest corner. Also in building 1, 93rd floor, southwest corner, K. Okay. Alright, I also have 2 world trades, 105 floor, 60 people. Come on, it's Steven. Um, my building got hit by a plane. And right now, well, I think I'm okay, I'm safe now, but it's smoky. I just want to say how much I love you, and uh, I will uh, call you when I'm safe. Okay, Mom? Bye. Don, I love you. I don't know what's going on. Tell the kids, save this message your whole life. I love you. I don't know what's going on here. Bye. I love you, and I'm stuck in this building in New York. There's lots of smoke, and you just want to do the nose, and I love you always. The South Tower is about to collapse. You will hear the sounds of the firefighters' radios being crushed as the tower collapses on top of them. I'm in here. Man, call you. is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now, raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way.
whole top of the building fell off, dude. Holy shit, dude. Oh, this is fucking gone. Look, this is there with the bomb in that fucking Oh my god, man. It's fuck? gone. Jesus oh Christ. Look, it's gone, man. This is not happening. This is off. so fucked up. Man. This is not happening. Center on the, the south building just fell. I just saw the whole thing. Oh my god! Three, three, so it had an urgent. Go ahead, Kate. One of the buildings is partially collapsed. It's a hole inside the area, Kate. Transmitting the urgent, identified. From this point forward, Dispatch desperately attempts to raise Fieldcom on the radio. However, Fieldcom is already gone. No one will be responding. Banana Fieldcom, Kate. Banana Fieldcom. Green 6 to Manhattan. Stand by, Banana Fieldcom. Banana Fieldcom. Marine 6 to Manhattan, urgent. Marine 6. Tower 2 has had a major explosion and what appears to be a complete collapse surrounding the entire area. Marine 6, 10 4, we were notified, Kate. Manana Field Comp, Kate. Manana Field Comp. George, have them mobilize the army. We need the army in Manhattan. 
is. All right, all units, stand by. Everybody try to calm down. Manhattan to feel calm, okay? Alright, Manhattan is division. Manhattan, uh. Manhattan, uh. Manhattan, Carnine, urgent. Manhattan, Carnine, urgent. Alright, Manhattan, any units operating at the Fifth Alarm, West Street and Liberty Street, at Tower Number Two, any unit, King. Any unit operating in number two World Trade Center at the collapse. Contact Manhattan by radio forthwith. Truck 15 Manhattan. I call 33 Bravo. We understand it's a major collapse. Can you give us some kind of report, Jay? Truck 15 to Manhattan. All right, ladder one five. Go. Truck 15 to Manhattan. Now, out of 15, you're on. Go ahead. This is an EMS worker. There's been a major collapse. We need additional units forthwith. Tempo, we have multiple units on the way in. Right on one flight. Can you ascertain if field comm is part of the uh, collapse kit? Ladder 1 5 to Manhattan. Be advised, I'm not a Sydney MOS. I'm an EMS MOS. <laughs> Manhattan, any unit at number two World Trade Center. All right, Manhattan, any unit operating at number two World Trade Center, urgent. EMS, Lionel 1-5. Lionel 1-5, Manhattan. Do you have a yeah, I want you to go to the nearest chief, fire department chief, and have him come to the radio forthwith. If you find anybody with a white hat, get him to the radio. I need a report to find out what else I can send to him. Forty shots. All units stand by, my sergeant. Is there a staff chief or a battalion chief trying to call Manhattan? Ladder 15 to Manhattan. We're sitting at the command post. Speed voice. Post a secret shelter in the building. They're coming out now. All right, all units stand by. Ladder 15 and ladder 15 only. Go ahead with your message. Engine 231, I'm at the World Trade Center. Do you want me to relay a message? Yes, I want you to find the chief officer and have him come to this radio so I can find out what additional help I can send him. You have three fifth alarm assignments and a second alarm assignment, either at the scene or responding. Let me know who's in command there at this moment. Two thirty one, ten four. Do that fourth with one. Two thirty one, ten four. Ladder one two four, Manhattan. Ladder one two four. We're at church and work. We're at the scene of the collapse. All right, ten four, ladder one two four. Are you previously assigned to one of those boxes? Negative. We picked it up as a firm, but we're uh, acting uh, ladder five. There's people all over the place. Everybody's dead. They're going back out. Uh, we're moving some people nearby. Moving some people to the chase back of Broadway. We're setting up an ad hoc, an, an ad hoc uh, emergency, emergency, emergency post with EMS personnel, okay? So we could use more people because the place is filling up with, with engines. All right, 10-4, we have multiple units on the way in at this time, Kate. 10-4. Any unit operating at number two World Trade Center? Any unit operating at number two World Trade Center, urgent. Any unit at number two World Trade Center, urgent. 
Alright, entry 228X, there's a possible you can get over to the Bell Marriott Hotel. Number 2 World Trade Center, firefighter trap. And I don't think we can proceed with the rig, we'll go as far as we can. Marriott World Trade Center, where are they trapped, Kate? Somebody call the urgent. Reported to be in a Bell area, Unicorn Urgent. We're, we're in that for, uh, the World Two uh, Two World Trade Center. We have some of the individuals in the front. We're waiting to evacuate them, Kate. Okay? Uh, ten four. Also be advised in the Bell area at the Marriott Hotel. We're receiving reports of firefighters trapped and down. What are we looking at? Ten four. The command post. Mobile Command Center in Manhattan, Kate. Okay? Yep. All right, Mobile Command Center, Kate. Okay? Uh, Manhattan, can you contact? you will come. Mobile Command Center, at this time, we are unable to make contact, Kate. Alright, 10-4, Manhattan, I'll get back to you. Alright, 10-4. Hey, Mobile Command Center, this is an urgent message. We need to set up a relay communication, case to find out exactly what's going on. We also have numerous calls reporting people trapped. Mobile Command Center. At 10-4, uh, could you try and relay that to uh, Car 9? Manhattan, Car 9, Kate. Manhattan, car 9K. All right, mobile command center. All right, redirect, uh, you're unable to raise. Uh, we'll try and work out something from... 521 Manhattan, check. 521. 521, Special Operations Command Messenger Vehicle responding to Manhattan with 12 rescue firefighters. 10 and then a lot of 3K, three, three trucks. Cody Charlie, Manhattan. Oh, Charlie. I don't know what you gotta do, but I want all the rescue firefighters available from home to report, Kate. 10-4, we have been uh, broadcasting that, Kate. Any all the help we can get. 10-4, uh, we have multiple units on the way in now. Four. Manhattan, line of 3K. Line of 3. ESU-1 needs someone to check Tower 2 and give them an update. Got a picture going down from the top. It looks like it's totally glowing red on the inside. It's inevitable. You saved it, it looked like the bill is gonna collapse. I would evacuate all people. I'm uh, being advised, Mobile Command Center is set up in front of PRA. I have Engine 209 with me, also Dr. Prezant. <laughs> And Supervisor Fire Marshal Burns, okay? That I have no radio contact with anybody else at this time. As soon as I get something, I'll let you know, okay? 10 Mobile Command Center.
All right, attention all units, we're receiving reports of number one and number two World Trade Center collapse. All units at the scene, receiving reports of number one and number two World Trade Center both towers collapse. Engine 236 to Manhattan. Manhattan responding. Yeah, we're jammed down in the street over here. We can't even move the car. I'm leaving the shelter with the rig. I'm heading over that way. 10-4. Hi, Manhattan announcing any division or any staff chief at the scene of the World Trade Center, okay? Any division chief or any staff chief at the scene of any of the World Trade Center, okay? Mobile Command Center to Manhattan, okay? Hi, Mobile Command Center, what chief, what chief do you have at your Mobile Command Center, okay? Uh, negative on any chief, okay? Right now we're all alone. The second building came down, I can't see. So we have no contact with anybody at this time, okay? 10-4. This is Battalion 4 Alpha. I have dozens and dozens of firemen. We're at the bulkhead on the Hudson River side of the World Trade Center. We have medical emergencies. We have EMS on the team treating possible heart attacks. Uh, we're in the process of getting some kind of a roll call. We're going to try to keep the units together here, Dave. Okay? Uh, 10 We have a medical emergency, possible heart attack, firemen. We're on the bulkhead. Yes, they're requesting oxygen for the firemen, okay? Any unit, hear me, come to the, uh, the bulkhead on the, on the Hudson River side of the World Trade Center. We're on the uh, West Street on the, uh, at the Battery Tunnel. Uh, conditions, the building is to zero. It's starting to uh, clear up. We're starting to see a lot of here. Uh, give us time so we could uh, report back to you and uh, for further instructions, okay? Engine 
I'm not sure what street we're on, Kay. Yeah, this is Marine 6. Uh, I'm on the West Side Highway. I'm pinned. I can't seem to get out, Kay. This is Marine. The officer or firefighter from Marine 6? The officer from Marine 6, Kay. We're on the West Side Highway or the West Side of the building? Uh, the highway. We're on the West Side Highway? Are you pinned in a piece of apparatus? I was, that's what. All right, we're going to get some members over there to assist you. Calling the mobile command vehicle. That was Captain Fuentes on the radio. He became pinned inside his vehicle after Tower 1 collapsed on top of him. He was eventually rescued but sustained crushing injuries to his skull, lungs, and ribs while remaining pinned for another two hours before rescuers could get to him. You're breaking up. Oh, that's good, guys. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to switch. Double command center. 
Yeah, listen, we got these all hands. We got Lula trapped on the west side. Go to one uh, squad. <laughs> You're breaking up. Repeat your message. People trapped on the west side, low Manhattan case. Now, what is this? Marine Battalion 8. All right, Marine Battalion, we have help coming in. If you tell me exactly where you are, I'll get you some help. Where are you? Bye. I can't read it. Bill is on top of it. Calling the mobile command vehicle. Any unit at the scene of the World Trade Center. Mobile Command Center to Manhattan, Chase. Mobile Command Center, we have firefighters from, from four engines responding to the location, off duty members. You have members trapped on the west side of Tower Number One. We believe it's Captain Fuente. He's unable to give us his exact location. Reported to be several members trapped. Do you have that message and copy it? Uh, 10 4 Manhattan, I got it. I relayed it to Keith Blake. He was on his way up with several members, okay? Alright, 10 4. 7 10 4. Be advised, we have several units. We're, we're transmitting out of ladder 124. We don't have a uh, rig or anything. Alright, we believe there are numerous members trapped in the vicinity of the west side of that building in the collapse zone. Side of building one. That's the best I can do for you. I'm getting that from a member who is trapped and unable to tell me where he is. Red four, he's in a vehicle. Uh, I said, uh, I don't know that. Calling Captain Fuentes. Uh, be advised, they have uh, Chief Nigro in the vehicle at this time, okay? Alright, 10 for advice. Chief Nigro. Other unit calling Manhattan. Look, okay. What? Yeah, right, we need some relief here, uh, we have the collapse unit, uh, this is Captain Fuentes, there's a couple other members, guys. Alright, Captain Fuentes, are you trapped? M4, mobile command to Manhattan, okay? What units do you have at Broadway and Beasy at this time? Oh, no, okay. We're not sure. We're going to have to send somebody over there. Also, be advised that we're in radio contact with Captain Fuentes and his people. They are trapped. He's trying to give me a location, but he's unable to. All right, 10-4. Like I said, Chief Blake is on his way up with members. He's trying to get into them now. Um, as soon as Mobile Command Center can, we're going to head out to Broadway and VZK. Okay, for calling uh, Captain Alright, so we have help on the way to your cap. We believe that you're in the uh, west side of the number one World Trade Center, out in front of the collapse zone. Is that correct? Sorry, the collapse zone, 10-4. Alright, sending you some help. Engine 7 and a lot of one members have received that message. We're on our way. Let them know. Alright, 7 engine 1 and 1 truck members are on the way, and the uh, staff chief is aware of your location, cap. So stand by. We'll be there in a little while. Rescue the rescue battalion. Everybody stand by unless urgent. Urgent. Go ahead, urgent. Now, I'm trapped here because from the previous collapse, I need some exit out, okay? Are uh, you at the west side of World Trade Center, the building number one, and it's sitting in the street? In the rear side of building number one. All right, 10-4. Units that are responding in to assist the uh, trapped members are now reported to be in the rear of tower number one. Rear of tower number one. All units responding in to assist members who are trapped, the rear of tower number one. Let's get rid of the time. Rescue, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna need a couple of guys here to lift this, uh, this beam up, okay, so we can get out of here. Do you have help on the way? Do you receive that? There is help on the way. Four. Alright, Captain Fuentes, calling uh, ladder 1-5 members. Calling any unit responding to assist the trapped firefighters. I just had a report. Exactly. From uh, PD that the uh, they have a report of a bomb or a suspicious package that is in the uh, battery tunnel at the present time. Would you advise uh, all companies to stay out of the tunnel until we get uh, this cleared up from PD? Mobile Command Center, be advised, Chief Nigro is making his way to the command post at Broadway and ZZ. He ordered Mobile Command to stay at the scene here at Battery and West, okay? Manhattan, do you have any uh, more of an idea where Fuentes is located? All units stand 
Five, calling Captain Fuente. Calling car 40 Charlie. Captain Fuente, come in if you read me. Uh, here there was a question of location. The last report we had was the rear of tower number one in the collapse zone. To convey to the Park Road Command Post that we have searches being conducted and exposure to of Engine 10's quarters. Okay, we don't know the address. Um, destructively safe building. <laughs> we also have, um, nobody is searching the, uh, we have a few firefighters in the rubble and they are uh, collapsed. We're trying to uh, bring them back so we can assess the situation, okay? Neocom to Chief uh, Manhattan. Go ahead, Stand by, go ahead, Neocom. Okay, I'm operating at the Vesey and Broadway command post. We have a report of building number four, World Trade Center, imminent collapse. Building number seven, battalion one from that location. Building number one, the remaining seven or eight floors are in danger of collapse and are fully involved. We also have uh, a member, a pin member that uh, is located, battalion four two, is at that location with two units. They are communicating with him at the location of 5 Wall Street, uh, 5 Well Trade Center. Okay. Repeat that, Manhattan. I want you to try to confirm that that member that they're attempting to get out is the member I was in contact with on the radio before. Uh, we'll try and verify that, Kate. That would be a captain, okay? That was a captain? Affirmative. Did you have his unit? Just uh, find out if it was the guy I was talking to. They'll, uh, they'll know who it is. Well, everyone, I don't want to say I hope you enjoyed because, well, to be honest, the point of this video is not to bring a sense of enjoyment um, or happiness. It is a very somber video uh, that I made to address a very dark time in our history, uh, a time that I've personally been affected by. I lived in North Jersey, and though I was only a child when this happened, I still have memories of seeing it on live television unfolding. My grandfather was a firefighter, and as I speak, I'm in the process of becoming one myself. When I rewatch a lot of this footage, it kind of makes me sick to my stomach, uh, seeing the planes going to the World Trade Center, especially the second plane, because that was the moment when people realized that this wasn't just like a freak accident that had happened. It was, without a doubt, intentional. The people who watched that second plane fly over their heads, and it was a moment of pure terror. It's crazy enough that I witnessed it on television from North Jersey. My family had just gotten back from a vacation in Arizona. We had flown with United Airlines out of Newark as well, and, uh... My whole family was on that plane, my father, my mother, with my little sister in her belly, me, and my younger sister as passengers. Had these terrorists planned this attack a week earlier, perhaps we could have been the plane that was hijacked in United 93's stead. But my thoughts and prayers go out to all of the victims of this horrible tragedy, all the firefighters who lost their lives, giving themselves over to something greater for other people, putting other people's safety above their own, climbing those towers, rushing up those stairs with 80 pounds of gear or more just to save as many people as they could before those towers collapsed, taking them all down with them. If any of the families of the victims are watching this video right now, I want you to know that you will always have a place in my heart. And while some may say, never forget, I assure you that I personally cannot forget. God bless you all, and uh, I hope everyone keeps these people and these victims and just this whole tragedy in their minds and keeps them in your prayers this September 11 anniversary that even 22 years later, just an event that is so surreal and has forever changed America. I hope you all continue to stay safe, and I will see you on the flip side. God bless.